there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and here we have a well-groomed man that I bought for 99p from eBay. So yes, I have got some hair clippers. Now, I know you're thinking, well, that's disgusting, and a lot of people would think it's disgusting, hence the reason why the listing ended with nobody bidding on it apart from me. But it said in the listing that it was bought new, never really, I think it said never used, or rarely used, then when they went to use it, it wasn't working anymore. And although the box is quite battered, everything else just looks perfect. Because I know what hair clippers look like after a little bit of use, and they do not look like this whatsoever. So I do actually believe that it hasn't had any use because I can't see any evidence of any hairs anywhere. So it uh, does the different grades of hair, the different lengths of hair by this little turn thing down here. This is supposed to be waterproof, and I think the uh, the model itself is okay. It's got a sharp self-sharpening blades, which is good, so you haven't got to use a little oil in here or anything like that. They just sharpen themselves. So, uh, yeah, it should be quite an interesting one. Now, I haven't done any testing apart from plugging it in to see if it was just a flat battery. My thinking is, is that something's gone wrong with the battery. Yet, I've plugged it in here for 10 hours and nothing happens. Even when I turn it on when it's plugged in, there's nothing happening at all. And what I did is I just got my multimeter just to see if this was outputting voltage because I didn't want to set the camera up if it was a case that it was a faulty adapter. And luckily, it is outputting voltage. So I think it could be an interesting one. If the battery had failed, which I suspect it has if it hasn't been used in so long, Surely then it would still work with power when you plug this in here, but it's not. So let's uh, let's try and take it apart and see what's happening. Now the only problem is, because it's like a waterproof one, you can see there's a little picture of a tap down here. There doesn't appear to be any screws apart from two little Torx screws here, so I'm not too sure how this goes together. But anyway, let me show you it plugged in and uh, show you it not working. And 99p, I'll just quickly show you the uh, the thing that came with it. There you go, you can see here, Philips Pro Mains Rechargeable Hair Clipper, 40, 99p plus £3.50 postage, so £4.49. So if I can get it working, this would be uh, this would be good. And I have actually been cutting my own hair for more than 20 years now. So if you use a mirror and another mirror so you can see the back of it, you do actually get used to cutting your own hair if you're not bothered about how you look. Right, uh, let's get the blue mat out and let's see if we can get this apart. So we got it plugged in and watch this now. I think the back said it was 15 volts. And you can see here, 15 volts, okay. There we go. Yeah, when we put it into here, and it only goes one way round, pushing it fully in, that won't go anymore. There's nothing there at all. Not even a tiny, tiny little burst of life. Okay. So, oh my God, <coughs> there we go. Right, let's uh, see, I think the biggest challenge is gonna be getting into this thing here. If it wasn't a waterproof one, I think it would be a lot easier. Here we go, oh, here we go. I heard a nice clip, that's always a nice sound. Am I gonna get another clip? Maybe not. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see what's happening. Oh, look at that, that's just popped up. Right, that hasn't been used. There's no hair in that whatsoever. It's perfectly clean. So that basically spins around like that, which then makes, makes these two blades go like that. And that's what cuts your hair. And of course, you're just using the attachments on top to give you different lengths. Otherwise, you would just have a skinhead with that. Right, okay. Uh, right, while I'm struggling with this, let's give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. I wonder if that's clipped on or whether that's glued on. Ah, oh, that's annoying, I just broke that. Okay. Yeah, well that's not... Uh... Mind you, it's gone under there. Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, that is kind of popping out, isn't it? Right, my mate Vince Massive is, this month is Saturnine Cinema. It's Operational 117. 
kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, and Will Michaelis. So thank you to everybody that takes the time to support these videos over on Patreon. And, 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 slightly getting sidetracked, but did you know, let me show you something. Here we have Roland Rat, a superstar. I have only ever been a fan club of one thing, and that was Roland Rat when I was a child. I used to love watching Roland Rat. I haven't actually watched it since. It might be something I might try watching with my kids, but I think they're a bit old for it now. But uh, I really did used to love watching Roland Rat. And... Talking about fan clubs, did you know that there is a My Mate Vince fan club? So Anders, if you're watching this, it's run by a guy called Anders over on Facebook. If you're watching this, feel free to put the link down in the uh, the comments down below, and then maybe some other people would be interested in it. Obviously, I'm not going to join my own fan club, that just seems wrong. But there is a My Mate Vince fan club run by Anders over on Facebook. So uh, yeah, if you're interested, Hopefully, it will be linked down in the comments. Yeah, I've got a feeling this is going to... I'm going to get this destroyed. But saying that, it doesn't have to be waterproof. Because the one I use at the moment isn't waterproof. That was a nice one. Oh, yes. Right now, so one broken tab there, one broken tab there, and that broken there. But that one, I think we can just glue that one back. Okay, so now, how are we supposed to take that apart? So it looks like we have this one here, and this one here, this one here, which is broken, and this one here. So is that part of that one? Yes, it's going to be part of that one there. Right, so it goes these bits here. These bits clip in. So it looks like you are supposed to take that one off first, but I suppose if you know where to go, you could have put your tool in there. So let's see where you're supposed to go. So you're supposed to go here and here and here and here. Screw here, screw here, and a couple of screws here. So yeah, it looks like that is how it comes apart. So let's undo these. And they look to be a Torx bit 6. Number 6. Are they long ones? Oh, okay, so that undoes this layer now, but it still doesn't undo that layer. Okay. Ah, so that's how that works. Can you see here when you turn this, it's just moving this up here. Yeah, along these little teeth here. And teeth here. There we go. Right, okay. Now we're starting to get into it, aren't we? That's your little on and off button here. Is that the button? Yeah, that clicks there. So what's this one? Yeah, it's just that cross there that goes into here, so I'm not sure what that one is, but there's definitely a button here. Unless could it be a button problem? It could be that the button's failed. Anyway, we need to strip it down more. There we go. Right, I can see a bit of circuit board in here, so now I have to undo these bits, and I'm hoping then it will come apart. Ah, I think this is like a rubber seal or something on it, because I can hear it, it seems sticky. It's 
coming though. Here we are. Excellent. Right. So, why do we have... Definitely looks like we've got two buttons. That feels... I don't know what that's for. Maybe that's to put pressure on the ring, you know, when you spin it. Anyway, here we have it. And it looks like... Yeah, it kind of looks shiny, so maybe it's got some, some sort of conformal coating on it to make it even more waterproof. So I think, first of all, let's see if this button is doing anything, because maybe there is voltage getting into here. So continuity, and let's go diagonals. So when the leads hit together, it makes a noise. There you go. Okay, switch is definitely working. Right, switch is definitely working, so it's not that. I think what we should do is zoom out a little bit, get, the, uh, get it plugged in, and see if we can measure voltage going into here. Let's see what voltage we're supposed to be getting. Right, it says 15 volts DC, and it's 5.4 watts. Right, so we're plugged in. We're on DC, and it looks like we've got two terminals here. Ah, so we've got 15 volts on these solder blobs here. So it's not that. So I think we need to zoom in, and I think I'll just read out the voltages to see if we can trace where it goes up onto the board. Now, is there a little fuse or anything anywhere? D4, is that a diode? Would that be some sort of reverse protection? Uh, and there's one shoot all the way up here into this little pick up here. Maybe. That doesn't look too healthy, does it? Okay, well, the negative definitely looks like it goes into here, and from here it looks like it goes into that one there and that chip there. So, let's see what we got. 15.3. 15 15.3. 15 1.8. Oh, okay. 1.8. So this size is going to be 15, is it? Yeah, that size 15. But this going up to that little pick is 1.8. Okay, 1.8 going up there. So we've definitely got voltage going into this chip here. I wonder have we got any voltage on the buttons at all? Yeah, we've got 1.29. And if I press it, yeah, it drops to nothing and then goes back to 1.29 again. Ooh, I think we need to take this out because I'm a bit concerned about this mess here. That could be just kind of flux from the factory, but it looks, hold on, is that capacitor there gone? Or is that just all dirty flux? Let's, uh, let's unplug it and let's go to continuity. Let's zoom out a bit. Let's see if that capacitor looks like it's shorted. So let's just take the negative from here. I right, got negative, we got a uh, short there, but not there. Now nah, maybe it's uh, maybe it's fine. Uh, let's take it apart a bit more if I can. So we've got a motor here. How am I going to actually take this board out? Here we go. Now, what's going to happen with these contacts at the bottom? Ah, so we've got the, the battery soldered on straight onto the board here. So is there anything the other side? That goes off to the motor. I suppose we could measure, though, if we've got anything on the battery. Well, we can do the batteries from here, can't we? Because, look, this is one tab off the battery, this is another tab off the battery, and that's another tab off the battery down here. So at least we know the tabs off the battery. So I don't actually need to take that out, do I? Does that look like a tiny bit of leakage on that battery there? Mm, yeah, it does a bit, doesn't it? Tiny bit of corrosion there. Right, let's see if we have any voltage on the batteries. So, here and here. Nothing. Oh, we've got something there though. So 
So we've got 1.2 volts there. Nearly 1.3. Nothing there. So now when I plug it in, I wonder would the voltage go up across that one there, the bottom battery. Fifteen volts. No, it's the same, isn't it? One point two eight. Nothing on that top one. And when I go to here, the motor. Turn it on. Anything happening? No. Uh, hmm. Is it just going to be that one of the batteries has failed? I think I'm going to have to unsolder this from here, aren't I? So I can see what the uh, what the batteries are. I just want to zoom right in here because maybe that's corrosion from the if, if the battery's leaked. Because remember, I said it looks a little bit corroded. You know what, that all seems very gooey around here. Yeah, that's uh, that battery's leaked. I bet it has. Well, I'm gonna get some IPA, clean it up, just to see if there's any trace damage, but I think we're gonna need a new battery. Now, when I mentioned that fan club earlier, I didn't set that up. That's, uh, I think Anders has set that up. So obviously it's not an official fan club, but you know what I'm like on YouTube. I'm not like, <laughs> I don't do what most people do. Uh, so I'm kind of not on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. So if, uh, you know, if anybody can get an enjoyment from it, then that's uh, obviously that's fine by, that's fine by me. Cause let's face it, I would never, I would never do a, a fan club for myself. <laughs> but uh, I think it's, I think it's brilliant. A fan club, honestly, I feel like Roland Rat. It feels, it's amazing. In all seriousness though, what this channel does have, it has a lot of knowledgeable, knowledgeable people down in the comments who are willing to help. So, uh, it could be a good opportunity, maybe if you had a, a question related to something or other, maybe some of the people on there would, uh, would know the answer. You know, a technical question, like if you didn't understand something. I'm just gonna put my meter to diode test a minute. I just wanna see whether these LEDs are gonna light up. And a red one there, or orange one there, right. Okay, let's zoom right in again. Right, okay, so I can definitely see that the, uh, the coatings come off here, but the tracks themselves still look intact, but we can do a quick continuity can't we on some of these ones here so again meter to continuity test so it beeps and let's just go from so that one looks like it's going to go from there to here yeah so although that looks bad that's fine now this capacitor is going up to all the way up to this area here so let's go to here and now let's see if we've got anything to this fire yeah, and yeah, so although it looks a mess, it is still actually making a contact. And what else have we got? We did that one. Did we do? No, we didn't do the one underneath it. Where's that one go to? Maybe here? Let's see. It's hard because of the conformal coating. It's hard to get through the components. There we go, it's that one. Right, so I don't believe it's anything to do with actual damage there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the soldering iron out, and I'm going to unsolder these two down here and then it will allow me to hopefully take the circuit board and batteries out, and then we can have a proper look at what's going on with the battery. Well, that's out. And that's out there. Excellent. Right, okay, so we got it there. 
Should I unsolder the wires here? Will that make it easier for me? Yeah, I think I'm going to unsolder the wires. Here we go, we are now out. So I suppose what we should do is just put a tiny bit of voltage into the motor just to make sure that is spinning. Right, that's just one volt. There we go. Okay. Okay, well I suppose I'm gonna unsolder this battery here. There we go. So I'm just gonna Google it and see how much they cost and just to make sure they are like 1.2 volts. Okay, I've had a look on eBay and basically they are for sale. And funny enough, it says for shave, uh, for Philips trimmers. So it must be quite a common thing that maybe these batteries go flat. Obviously, all batteries do go flat if you've used it for a while. But remember, this is new, so uh, I'm wondering if there's a way I can get a bit of charge into here because they're just 1.2 volts. Uh, I'm wondering then, you see, because right now, of course, I can buy a new battery. They're £6 on eBay. I'll be able to get it cheaper from someone like CPC if I order other stuff along the same time. But I'm still not 100% convinced because I just think it's a bit of a design fault that it only works when there's power in the batteries, even when you plug it in here. So that bit's sort of confusing me. So I don't want to buy a £6 battery if there's a component on here or a chip or something that's gone. So I'm going to see if I can revive this battery at all. So I've got here a little... Uh, nickel metal hydrate charger here you see universal battery charger i got given this for free well maybe not for free i did a little bit of uh somebody was struggling with a little bit of welding so i just helped them out with a little bit of welding and then they gave me this that they had they had a duplicate one so i've already got some just normal rechargeable batteries that you use for things like deck phones and when i put it in there you see the light comes on and if i measure voltage here you can see that uh we have on that one there 1.26 volts and on this one here 1.4 volts i've actually got 1.4 volts i wonder now is that because that's more discharged than this i'm just going to swap them over and just to see if that happens on here so let's put this in here and this in here i've just had to fold these over here so it makes a good contact you know the little legs that stick down right let's see now is that still the same or has it changed 1.3, yeah, so obviously the charger knows this is more discharged and it's putting more voltage into it. So that's saying that it's kind of recognizing the battery. So I'm gonna leave that charge up for a while to see if we can get any voltage back into it. If we can, we might find then that the thingy is working. Now, if all that stuff that came out of it is from this battery, then obviously it's, it's shot and I will then buy a new one if this works. The only thing is, let me just take this off quickly. I was having a look here, and if you look, I mean, that's as clean as could be. And this side is also as clean as could be. So I'm not 100% sure if, I mean, it must be battery leakage, mustn't it? Because it's got corrosion on the board. It's just that, uh, you see, this one looks all right as well. I don't know, unless it came out of this one. If anything, this looks slightly dirtier than this one here. So I don't really know what's, what's going on here. But... Let's put it in here for a while and then see what happens. And then if I have to buy a new battery, it's still worth doing it. So I've looked this up online and it does say here for corded and cordless shoes. For flexibility and convenience, the head groom can be used with or without the power cord. So that clears up that little mystery. Then it should be able to work with just the power cable plugged in. So I've been charging up the battery for about an hour now. So let's go see if there's any voltage in it and whether it can actually hold on to that voltage for any amount of time. Okay, let's pop the batteries out. Now it would need longer. Apparently this one here takes, I think it takes eight hours to charge, which is uh, a long time according to the instructions. This particular model, in case anybody is interested, is the QC5339. Well, look at that, 1.4 volts. And, well, holding okay. 
It's not shooting down rapidly, really, is it? 1.4 volts, fantastic. Look, let's give it a go and see what happens. Because I think even fully working, they only last, I think, I think it said 60 minutes that it lasts. So really, after every haircut, you're going to have to be charging it. Now, these are in series. So we've got negative, positive, negative, positive, and it's joined there. So up here, we should be having around 2.4 to, I suppose, 2.8 volts. So let's, uh, let's pop this in. I need to solder it back up again now. And I reread the eBay listing and basically it said they bought it in 2018, they never used it. When they went to use it, it was dead. They charged it up for 12 hours and it's still dead. And I did charge it up for 10 hours and it didn't do anything. So that's... Uh, that's interesting. So it really hasn't been used, hence the reason why when I looked at it earlier, it just looks perfect. Okay, so that's a nice big blob there. Let's just do this top one here. Right, so we should have, if I turn this on here now, we should have voltage up on these ones up here, shouldn't we? Volts DC. I'm on the two parts that go to the, uh, the motor. Right, you can see we've got nothing there at the moment. Let's turn it on. Yes, 2.6 volts. Fantastic. Turn it off. And nothing. Brilliant. Turn it on. Ah, oh, excellent news. Okay, I'm going to give it a little mini yes because although it's just a battery fix, it's still a, it's still a fix, isn't it? It's still a product that wasn't working. The problem is the very fact of taking this product apart. You can see it's not really designed to be taken apart. It's uh, I've caused a lot of damage. But saying that, I've caused damage to it. But now because I've caused damage to this one, you'll have a lot better idea of where the clips are to undo your one. So at least you know now where to be prying to get it apart. Well, let's solder these wires back on here and then put it all back together, which should be, uh, should be fun. Okay, so uh, this is that bit here with the soldering done. So now let's see if the motor turns. Oh yes, and it turns nice as well. Now this is still plugged in, so let's see if it's work. Ah, the light's coming on. Look at that, the charging light. Fantastic, let's see if it's working now. Yes it is. I wonder whether the voltage is different now that we've got this plugged in. Of course we have to turn it on, don't we? Okay, well we'll turn it on. And we'll see. Right, 2.65. 2 2.6, 2 2.6. So yeah, it's a tiny bit different, isn't it? And dropping. Yeah, you can see it drop in there. So now let's plug this in. Let's see if it drops now when it's like this. Uh, 
Okay, so look, it's what well, it is dropping, but not as fast. Yeah, look at that. But it is still dropping. Ah. Uh, yeah, I wonder now. Well, mind you, remember this battery is gonna this battery is gonna be weak because I only had it plugged in, and and that charger I've got, I think it says it takes four or five hours. Uh, I'm just wondering now. I mean, realistically, I, I presume that battery does need replacing because you've seen that the corrosion was here. But I know how to take it apart, so I'm gonna run with this for a while because these batteries haven't been used. This is new. It's just that because it hadn't been used in so long, I suppose they must have discharged themselves or. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I you know I, I know that I can get it fully fixed by just spending six pound on eBay or probably even less if I went to one of the uh, CPC or Farnell or RS components, something like that. Uh, I'm just a bit curious if that's dropping there when it's on. You would think then that eventually, even with power going into it, that it would stop working. But it's definitely doing something different when power's going in and the charging light's coming on. So I think that the I think that side of it is working okay. So let's uh, let's get it fully back together and then see with the attachment on whether it's still working all right. I think while I've got this apart, I'm going to put a bit of super glue in this bit here. Spraying some super glue activator on it to make it go off quicker. And I'm just going to run the soldering iron over it just to try to melt the seam a little bit. Well, it might do. Well, that went together okay. It didn't clip as nice as I would have liked because obviously a few of the tabs are broken here, but you're only supposed to put this bit under the water anyway. And you know what? I've personally never done that. All I do is clean it with the, the, the little brush or you know, you take this out and clean it with the brush. So although it's probably quicker to do it underwater, I've only ever used a brush anyway, so I don't think I will be putting this near water, but the inside bit is still gonna be waterproof. It's just this outer casing, which isn't. Well, yeah, it does lock into place. Okay, yeah. And it's supposed to move the contour off your head. So now, turn it on, and the clippers are moving there. So how am I gonna to prove to you that is this is working? You're gonna to wanna to see some hair removal, aren't you? Now, I'm not gonna cut my hair on camera, Oh, why is that not clipping in now? Hold on now. That clipped in. Why is this not clipping in? Do you have to lock it into place, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. Look. Ah, ah, of course. You can only take it out when it's fully down like that. And that's why it gives the little click. It kind of gives a little uh, look. When it goes down, watch. Watch this now. There. Do you see it just pops up? And that allows you to take it out. Now, that is good, isn't it? Do you know what? I think this is better than the one I've got. Right, let's uh, shave a little bit of the hairs off my arm to show you it working. So, who remembers this watch? Anybody remember that watch where I the dial went wrong on me? Here we go. Yeah, there you go. I'm not doing any more than that, but you can see how well that's worked there. Nice and smooth. Right, so uh, I really enjoyed that one there and you can see the light lighting up here. So I had finished the video and I was editing it up and then I thought to myself, there is a possibility that maybe it's not charging the batteries. 
I didn't actually, I only tested at the motor. I didn't test across the batteries to see if the voltage was higher when I plugged the charger in. So I thought I'd do a real world test. My hair was getting a bit on the big side anyway. So there we go, that is my hair. I'm still happy because there's more brown than gray. So that's always a good sign. So what I'm gonna do now is, I've just been cutting my hair for about 30 minutes, maybe a bit longer, and it performed perfectly. So. I'm gonna leave it on now, I'm gonna have a shower, I'm gonna leave it on, and it's supposed to last an hour, but this wasn't fully charged. So then I'm gonna do it until it completely runs out, and then I'm only gonna plug it in for an hour or two, and if there's any life in it whatsoever, we then know that it's definitely charging the batteries. If you check this out, I've had this on for about another seven or eight minutes, and it shut itself down. And now if I turn it on, it will stay on for about 10 seconds, get weaker and weaker, and then cut off. getting weaker and there we go it's gone so now I'm going to charge it up and hopefully if it stays on in an hour or two's time for more than that 10 seconds there we know that charge has definitely gone into the batteries and I can call this a fix for the time being but again I don't know how long that battery is going to last so here we have it what do you think I need to remember to look in there and not the viewfinder. That's the mistake everybody makes. So lockdown haircut, 99p. I'm quite happy with it. Sort of haircut where you get out of bed, two scratches and you're done. You don't have to do anything else with it. So this has been charging for about 45 minutes now to one hour. It's not very long. So let's see if it's gonna last longer than 10 seconds. So I'm just gonna get my watch and here in the same shot. Well, there we go, that must be about a minute. So I think we can safely say that it is definitely charging. So what a result. So I guess my only question is, why did it not work with the adapter? Because when the battery was flat just earlier on, I plugged in the adapter and I held it on for a minute and it was working fine with no loss of power. So it definitely works with the adapter even when the battery's flat but yet when the battery's completely discharged earlier on, it wasn't working at all, which is strange because I would have thought it would have just bypassed the battery completely, but it must need some voltage in the battery even just to operate. The weird thing is though, these are not lithium batteries. So as far as I know, I didn't think it was dangerous to let them go completely flat. So uh, yeah, that's my only question down in the comments. If anybody knows the answer to that, please put it down there. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up and I will see you very soon. Take care everyone. Bye now. Mm -hmm.